welcome to product rule for counting. Um, before we get going today, I just want to remind you that there is a notes jotter available for this video. If you look in the description below, you'll find a download link. You can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so our first question says, a restaurant offers a set menu. You must choose one each from three starters, five main courses and four desserts. How many different combinations of starter, main and dessert are possible? Well, let's just start with one starter option. So we've chosen a starter. Now, we have an option of five different main courses. And so we have five different main courses. But now for each of those main courses, I can make four more choices for dessert. And so we now have this. How many options has that actually given us? Well, with the first um, main course, we've now got four choices. For the second main course, another four choices. For the third main course, another four. For the fourth, another four. And for the fifth, another four. So in total, from just this first starting point of a single starter, we've chosen five different main courses and for each of those, four different desserts. And so overall, we have 20 different combinations. But at this point, that is only dealing with our first choice of one starter. We had three different starters we could have chosen. Therefore, this com uh, number of 20 combinations actually needs to be multiplied by three, giving us a total of 60 combinations. But this, uh, this video is called product rule for counting. Now product means multiply. So there must be a method where we could go from our starting point of three starters, five main courses and four desserts straight to this answer of 60. And to do that, we're just going to think about filling boxes. We've got our starter, our main and our dessert. How many options did we have for starter? We had three. For main course, we had five. And for dessert, we had four. Product means times. Let's multiply. Three times five times four equals 60. We have the number of combinations possible by multiplying. Our second example. Uh, we have four dials on a combination lock, numbered 0 to 9. Now this may be very similar to um, the passcode you use for your mobile phone, your PIN number for your debit card, um, ways of unlocking uh, something. So we have um, four different dials, each numbered 0 to 9. Now Jenny knows that her combination starts with an odd number and ends with a prime number. How many different combinations could Jenny have? Well, again, let's have a look at filling some boxes. We've got four boxes for each of the four numbers on our combination lock. And Jenny knows her number starts with an odd number. So with zero to nine, the odd numbers would be one, three, five, seven, and nine. So for the first value in her, uh, in her combination, there are five different options. The last number is a prime number. And so which numbers are prime? Well, zero is not a prime number. One, the one people often mistake, is not a prime number. It only has one factor. The first prime number is two, and then we also have three, and we have five, and we have seven. So we have 
four options for the last value. The other two numbers we don't know anything about. All we know is that they are the numbers from zero to nine. So that is actually 10 values in the second box and 10 possible values in the third box. And again, we're going to use our product rule. We are going to multiply. So we just need to work along. Five times 10 is 50, times 10 is 500, and times four is 2,000 combinations. It's a big number, but that is how many would work. Okay, so in our third example, um, we're looking at uh, Miranda who is making a three-digit number using the cards above. Now, as these are cards, we me it means we can only use each digit once. How many different numbers greater than 500 can she make? Well, again, all I want to start with are some boxes to fill. And we need to look First of all, at this phrase, greater than 500. Because the number needs to be greater than 500, it means that the first value, the first digit, cannot be 4 and it cannot be 1. The only options would be 5 or 9. So in the first box, we have two options. Now in the second box, we can use any of the digits we didn't previously use. So if we'd use, use the 5 as our first digit, I could use 4, 9 or 1. If I'd taken 9 as my first digit, I could have used 4, 5 or 1 in the second box. So I have three options. And now, because we have used two digits in order to create the first two parts of our number, we only have two digits left from our cards and so the last section we also have two options so a quick multiplication two times three times two equals 12. Miranda could make 12 numbers which were greater than 500. Okay so just um, one more example that you won't find on your worksheet um, the Netball League has six teams. Each team must play each other team once. How many games are played in total? Now, this one is a good question in the fact that there is a little trick within, uh, within it that you must be aware of. Now, if we have six teams, if we think about our product rule, we've got six times. Now, Six times what? Well, each of the six teams have to play against five others. And so it will be six times five. And so the obvious answer here would be that there are 30 games to play. But there is an issue with this. Now, what we're thinking of here are if we have team A and we have team B. B. Now the six teams that we started with include both A and B. And so this six times five includes the match A versus B and the match B versus A. Now in this league they are not playing each other home and away like you might find in many, uh, many real life football leagues and netball leagues around the world. In this league, they are only playing once. So we need to think about how can we deal with these repetitions of matches. And the little trick here is that if you are only going to be playing once, we need to half this result because that will get rid of the uh, situations where we have repetitions of the same match. And so actually, this league would consist of 15 games. And so our last question is the exam question. It comes from Edexcel in June 2017 and it's higher paper three. Now to note here, because it's paper three, that is a calculator paper, meaning we can use calculator later on if needed. Um, 
So in the question, Jeff is choosing a shrub and a rose tree for his garden. At the garden centre, there are 17 different types of shrubs and some rose trees. Jeff says there are 215 different ways to choose one shrub and one rose tree. Could Jeff be correct? You must show how you get your answer. Now the fact that we're looking at the number of different ways to choose, that means we're looking at combinations. It means we need to use the product rule for counting. And so we need to think about the fact that there were 17 types of shrub and some trees. That means 17 times something, let's call it X, must equal 215. Now, the question is, can that actually work? So all we need to do is we need to reverse that calculation. 215 divided by 17. Now this is where our calculator comes in handy. If we do 215 divided by 17, we actually get an answer of 12.647058825. Now, the question is, could Jeff be correct? Well, this all stems from this result. This result must be an integer if Jeff is correct, because we need to have a number of rose trees that we can actually count. We aren't going to buy 12.6 rose trees or be able to choose from 12.6 rose trees. Therefore, Jeff is not correct.